thank you, Jonathan, and thank you, everybody, and thank you, INN, and everybody for. I, I'm just I'm honored to be here, and I know part of that is because I uh, we're helping sponsor, but it's still it's great. INN is just the absolute best. Um, I want to first just quickly introduce the two people who are joining me today. I'm very uh, happy to have uh, two distinguished uh, people, both of whom happen to be INN board members. Uh, Nancy West, who's the uh, founder of the New Hampshire Center for, the, uh, for Public Interest Journalism and the editor of indepthnewhampshire.org, which is a real powerhouse of news reporting up in New Hampshire and has been a great partner for us. And also we have Marsha Parker, who I have to say, um, in addition to being the uh, fabulous chief operating officer of Cal Matters, a real powerhouse in California, was also the former director of uh, Patch's West Coast operations uh, in a previous life. And without her, uh, Patch would not be uh, where it is today. And I'm appreciative to her on many levels for also hiring some of my colleagues and friends. Um, the reason I am here today is to tell you about the Patch Revenue Program, part, well, the Patch Partnership Program, which for nonprofits has a revenue sharing component. We started this program um, about a year ago, a little more than a year ago, to recognize the fact that local news, the local news landscape is changing. And I just realized that I, my version of the slideshow has closed. And, Colin, I'll, I'll pull oh, okay. your, your slides up. Don't worry about it. Got Sorry. it. Terrific. My, uh, my fault. Sorry. Anyway, we started this program uh, recognizing that the local news landscape is changing and that as an organization with a national reach, we have an obligation to try to help other people. And what we do is we work most, we have about 100 partners so far, a little, somewhat more than that. And our goal is to is twofold. One, to provide more exposure to partners, but two, to try to bring them some cash. Now, obviously, it's not a fortune, but we try to help in every way we can. Some partners we've been more successful in promoting, and it's a constant learning experience for us. Um, we really, I, you know, I, I, I sort of joke with people, but it's only somewhat, somewhat a joke that for us, this is sort of like the miracle on 34th Street approach to journalism. Um, I don't know if you've seen the movie or I'm just dating myself, but in that movie, Santa always used to say to people who were coming into Macy's, if Macy's didn't have a good thing, they would send them to Gimbel's. And we're sort of taking the same approach. Patch recognizes as many people as we hire, we're never going to have enough people to cover everything. And there's a lot of people who cover things far better than we do. And if they do that, why shouldn't we send people to them and help promote that organization and the journalism that they do? And we try to do it under one umbrella to give readers as much content as we can possibly do and to spotlight the work of others. Um, we give revenue sharing um, because we're a national organization with a, a strong uh, social media uh, component, we're able to do more to try to promote those partners. Um, we create special user accounts uh, to make sure, you know, part of the key is transparency. We want people to understand that um, while the, they're reading this story on Patch, it comes from other another organization. So we make sure that organization has a byline and we make sure every article that we published by that partner has at least two links, sometimes more, back to that partner's website. Because, you know, yes, it, we want to make sure we're giving our readers more content, but we also really take very seriously the job of promoting other news organizations. Um, on occasion, we've also had the opportunity to work with some organizations on joint reporting projects. That's something we're still working on developing but um, it's uh, something that uh, we're trying to do more of. Uh, Jonathan, if you wanna to go to the next slide. 
Um, yeah, I mean, you know, again, for us, Patch, you know, if you don't know Patch, we are all about local. We are built on local. It's about making sure people have the information they need to make it through the day to make informed decisions. We're in about 1,200 communities right now, and uh, we're continuing to grow. We have uh, nearly 200 editorial staff scattered around the country, and each um, each patch really operates. I mean, even though we're all part of the same company, each patch operates as a semi autonomous thing in that they're all focused on really just covering their community. Um, it's, uh, um, you know, the other, and I'm sorry, my allergies are killing me and um, it's only 7.45 in the morning here. So I apologize if I am uh, repeating myself. The revenue share is really a key component for us because it does provide um, some of our partners with a regular stream, even if it's a small stream of income every month. And we experimented with a couple of different formulas for how to do it. And then we finally realized that the best way to do it is to keep it simple. So for nonprofits, every time you get a page view, you get a penny. It's a, it's a simple formula, but it works. Um, in the case, as, as, as Nancy and Marsha uh, will both tell you, you know, it's, a, it's an extra couple hundred bucks a month. And uh, so it's, it's not a fortune, but it's not a bad thing either. Um, I feel like I've sort of uh, stumbled through some of this stuff. Um, and I think maybe the best way to do this is to let Marsha and Nancy talk and go right to your questions. And I'm happy to answer anybody's questions afterward. So Nancy, you wanna go? Yes. Yes, good morning, everybody. And um, Colin, thank you for inviting me. Um, Sue Cross, thank you for INN Day yesterday. Jonathan, it was a terrific day. And I'm just happy to be here. It's um, very interesting. InDepthNH.org, we started about five years ago. And it's been a very slow build. We haven't had a big budget. We really bootstrapped the whole thing. So we haven't had a budget to sort of advertise or push ourselves out there. So anytime we can find a new way to get our excellent reporting out there is a bonus for us. Um, we're a small outfit, but we have the most experienced reporters in the state. We usually try to fill niche reporting projects, things that, um, the local traditional media isn't covering or isn't covering as in-depth as we would like to see it. And so we have a certain um, in-depth quality to our reporting that may not always uh, be quick clickbait, but we have grown because of, um, I think so many people in the state realize we cover state house very well state house was one of those areas where we were really short on content that was um really in depth and showed what's going on we have the most experienced reporters covering everything so getting we getting our getting eyes on the great reporting is important and that's been a real boon with patch I happen to have known um, Tony Chanella. He runs the Concord Patch here in New Hampshire. So I had a, you know, a certain level of trust and respect for Patch from the get-go. And when I was approached, I, I really didn't think we'd make, make much money on this site because, you know, a lot of, I, I just didn't know how our in-depth reporting and columns, we have quite a few really talented writers who work with indepthnh.org, how that would translate on the patch website. And I have to say, I've been really thrilled. The first month, I think we, we joined in late December and you know the first few checks were a couple of hundred bucks and it's been growing. Our page views on patch have been growing it's helped grow our page views right at the site. 
And, you know, my last check, the best part of patch is opening the check. The, la the last time I opened my check, it was our check. It's, I, I can't remember the exact figure. I think it was $1,046, which was phenomenal for us. And, um, you know, that's, that's excellent revenue. You know, that's not chump change at in-depthnh.org. We're very, very pleased with this. Patch has a good reputation in New Hampshire and it's growing and I'm happy to be connected with it. And I can't tell you how many times people have said they found us through Patch. You know, I often ask new readers if I get a chance, how did you find us? And Patch is really out there. I think in New Hampshire, uh, Patch has 13 different sites, 12 or 13, I'm not sure. And because we do a lot of in-depth reporting about statewide issues, a lot of our stories run on all of the different sites. I think that may help us a lot, but whatever. Colin, we, we, we really appreciate this partnership and we think it's gonna, we're happy to have it continue. And I'm happy to be here today and thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Marsha? Helpful if I unmute. Good morning to everyone. So uh, thank you so much for inviting me. Um, uh, as Colin said, Patch has a, a special place in my heart because I was one, the first uh, uh, editor for all of Patch. I think there were like three guys and me at the beginning. And, um, you know, so I've stayed really close to the Patch team uh, here in California because I hired all of the, all of the uh, team that's running the West Coast um, and when I first got here, which is now uh, a little over three years ago, one of the very first things I did was put all our content up on Patch because I really wanted to support Patch. And also I wanted to understand, as Nancy said, how um, uh, what some people can call, uh, you know, content that's kind of spinach, uh, state news, state government, uh, in-depth, insightful type reporting, how would it do on, a, on the local uh, news uh, sites that Patch has, which is about 160 in the state. And our content is done very, very well. And I, I work uh, closely with the editorial team here in part because I have a friendship with them. And also because I am uh, really using the platform to learn how we connect with um, audiences uh, in local communities across the state and how what can we do. I mean, our content is done very well. I'm looking at the Patch um, my data studio, uh, Google Analytics data studio right now. And we, since we started, which is, you know, quite a while back, we have more than 500,000 page views to our content. And, you know, you can see it by patch community. So it's very interesting to, from a learning standpoint, and I've done some experimenting uh, with patch in terms of specific promotion of certain kind of work, including our events, which you might think a little bit about. Um, they're very good about, pinning. We've been doing a lot of virtual events around the coronavirus, uh, you know, because we're, we, uh, uh, CalMatters is um, really the, the only uh, statewide news organization in, in, in California covering state government. And so there is a lot of dependency among our, our media partners on that, on that content. And we are doing, you know, tons of virtual events and we do public events, et cetera, et cetera. So we're using the platforms to reach people. And we think, you know, we only have one mission, which is to uh, inform our communities across California. So it's a very, um, very useful, um, very useful platform. Yes, we appreciate the revenue. Uh, and I, I really do appreciate that uh, Patch has, is actually supporting publishers in that way. I think there's still quite a lot that we can do with the Patch um, with our distribution, we haven't really begun yet to, um, you know, I'd say fully explore what we can do in terms of um, editorial collaborations and things like that. But we definitely um, use it uh, to to reach many more people. And what I want to be able to do next is think about how we can actually connect with those communities, engage with them. So we we have done a little bit of um, advertising on the sites. Um, We've done some newsletter promotion. We're thinking about how can we kind of co-market co um, to uh, gain actual subscribers. 
and uh, convert them into donors um, across the state. And we also did a big project um, in 2018 with our election guide that was very successful because we did the big statewide um, election guide. And we got tons of page views from that. Uh, we patch, um, pinned all of the content relating to our election guide, and we got thousands of people you know, going to our guide, watching our election videos. And, you know, that was very, um, you know, it was very rewarding to see that happen. And happy to, you know, answer other questions. I actually, did, Colin, I actually didn't realize um, that the content might be distributed to the water at a uh, wider audience through like Yahoo News, etc. We're on Apple News and Flipboard and a few other of those platforms now, but uh, we're not, for example, on on uh, Yahoo News, so that's that's interesting to me as a publisher. Yeah, we distribute through Yahoo, MSN, um, Flipboard, Apple News. Apple News was actually uh, during the first six weeks of the pandemic was listing patch at the top of local news sources for um, in the apps. I'm sorry, in, in, in Apple is featuring us in the app store as a source for local news. Mm -hmm. um, a couple other uh, questions that have all th things that I should have mentioned. And I see some people are asking about um, the way it basically works is we use a system that's cleverly called import to use to import material from a publisher's website into our CMS as a draft where it's then reviewed by uh, a member of our editorial staff and then published and included in newsletters and pinned so it gets uh, put up on our Facebook pages. Um, the amount of work that this involves for publishers um, is really nothing. Uh, we try to make this as uh, burden-free as possible for publishers uh, because we really want to make it about helping them and giving people exposure and not adding work to their load. At the same time, we recognize that some publishers like to have a certain amount of control um, and we are always willing to work and adapt. And if publish, if someone were to want to control the publishing, uh, happily provide the training on our CMS to make it, um, to show you how to do it so you could publish directly, uh, which is something some, uh, some people do like to do. It's not, uh, our CMS is very intuitive and it gets better every day because we have a great development team. Uh, we also always do include uh, the canonical uh, URL, um, Again, this is all, I mean, yes, uh, I'm not gonna lie. There is a very selfish aspect of wanting to keep readers on patch give, or, and bring more readers in. At the same time, I can't overstate how important it, to us, important it is for us to help promote other people. Um, I've been in, I'm 53, um, I've been in news since I was 16. Um, I really am very corny about the mission of journalism and of news. And I've spent many years working at local outlets and there's nothing more important to me than local news. And we wanna help everyone we can. Colin, we have a couple of other questions. Um, we have a, a fair number of people at our conference and even in the session who aren't yet INN members um, or who may not be nonprofits at, at all. Um, and they wanted to know, you know, how do you, do you guys work with for profits or do you guys work with, you know, not INN nonprofits? Um, and are there, do you pay, what are the rates, anything like that? So can you speak to how you work with organizations that may not, may not be INN members? Yes, we have, we have members um, who are INN members who are not INN members. I would say, of our 110, 120 uh, current partners, only about a quarter are INN members, obviously. I hope to see that grow. Um, but uh, we have for-profit. Um, we actually just signed a, a new uh, small news organization outside of Chicago, which is a for-profit. 
um, the uh, revenue sharing with for profits is uh, usually about uh, three quarters of a penny as opposed to a penny, which we give nonprofits. We have nonprofits who are um, not INN members. We one of the most notable ones is States Newsroom which I believe may be talking with INN or not talking with INN, but eventually joining, but they run um, state house newsrooms in more than a dozen states right now. And uh, we have a great relationship with them. They do great work. Uh, we are willing to pretty much work with everyone. Uh, what we've discovered is some partnerships work better than others, but we, um, and some, cases we have uh, uh, learned that we have to take other approaches with partners to get more of their content out there. As I said, it's a learning experience. Our goal is to really do everything we can to help every news organization that we work with regardless of their status. Great. Um, and another thing that I've, I've uh, seen come up is um, how about topic sites? We've talked, you know, Marsha with Cal Matters and Nancy with In-Depth New Hampshire and um, you know, the other ones you mentioned are a lot of local sites or at least geographically based sites, but I know you work with um, topic based sites too. Um, so say a little bit about how that's worked um, and how this might work out for some INN members who are topic driven. Uh, that is uh, one of the areas in which it's been a learning experience for us about how to best promote topic based material. We have um, we have several, uh, one of our most notable, which is not a, um, not an INN member, is Consumer Reports, which is very much a topic-based organization. And they're getting about, uh, right now, we just started with them a couple of weeks ago, and they're getting about 10,000 page views a week, and, and it's been building since then. Um, it's, uh, in, you know, it's one of those things in which um, we try to figure out how we can best help that partner. Um, in some cases, it's been more successful, like with Consumer Reports. In other cases, it's a learning experience. And, um, and what we try to do is we uh, Patch has national pages. We have a page we call Across America. We have a page called... Um, uh, the White House uh, patch, which is obviously politics and government stuff. And we have uh, our national homepage. And what we're now trying to do with some of our uh, issue-based, topic-based organizations is work harder to get their stuff on our Facebook pages around the country and uh, using that way to promote our partners in that regard. And it's still a learning experience. And as we try different things, um, we, you know, we, we bob and weave until we get it right. Does that answer that question at all? Yeah, it does. Um, so my, the next question that I think um, we still have is what, when you talk about editorial collaborations, what might be possible? Can you talk about an example of what you've done in the past or um, you know, what an editorial collaboration with Patch might look like? Um, it, it's something that is, um, that we're, we're still developing and it varies on the size of the partner, what they're covering and what they're uh, doing. Last year, we worked uh, hard to try to get a partnership with um, the League of Women Voters about voter guides that ultimately didn't succeed for um advertising reasons and stuff like that but you know our goal is always to uh, find someone that um like right now we're uh, i i it's not a done deal yet but we're working on uh a news with a news organization to try to develop um a series of stories that uh would run on both platforms that would involve um, uh, reporters from that organization and reporters from our organization sort of divvying up, divvying up uh, responsibilities to try to come up with series on one topic. Great. 
Um, and have you found any particular types of content do really well? Is there a, a key to how you achieve um, Nancy level of success uh, on Patch? Is there something that others who are interested should know about what, what makes this work? The, 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 the most successful um, partners we've had have been the most local news organizations. What we have discovered is that uh, especially um, over the course of the pandemic, we have seen uh, people starved for local news and they've been coming to us uh, really in droves. We saw our readership uh, grow substantially from uh, February uh, to March. And, a, and we, uh, the good news about it is that even though there was a, uh, a slight drop off in page views from March through today, it hasn't been substantial. And so what we've discovered is people really, really, really like local news. They want to know what's happening in their community. They want to know what they can do to be involved. They want to know about their school district. They want to know about their city council. Uh, they want to know about what's, uh, you know, what's happening with traffic in their neighborhood. And that material really resonates with people. And as a result, they, uh, they came for the pandemic and they've stayed for the local coverage. That's great. Um, Colin, Diana Schimo uh, asks if she's saying she's not seeing any issue national tabs on the patch homepage. Could you say a little more about how to find how people, how users might find that or how um, publishers might explore the sort of content that you have on pages like that? Uh, what we are actually in the process of working on right now are um, topic pa uh, topic pages that will be affiliated with both our homepage and our Across America page. And uh, we had been uh, doing something with tags earlier. It didn't really work for us the way, it, and it didn't really work for our partners the way we wanted it to. So we've been revamping it and we will be reintroducing topic pages um, over uh, really the, hopefully the next couple of weeks, if not a month or so. Uh, but yeah, topic pages are very important because we do have uh, several uh, partners such as uh, Fair Warning, um, H2O Radio, um, and others who do very specific stuff. Um, and we hope to be able to better promote those partners through topic pages, such as one dedicated to uh, climate change and environmental coverage. Yeah, and it looks like Marsha wants to weigh in. Marsha, please add. Sure, I just wanted to tell everyone that um, I know that so many of our INN members are local, and I just wanted to note that what we've been doing on um, coronavirus our weekly virtual series and also just you know our general uh, our general coverage i feel like that has been uh, content that's been consumed at a really high level across the state and i feel like all of you who are producing um great local content on the impact of uh the virus and the recovery and et cetera et cetera um in your communities will be very valuable to uh your local community so i really urge you to really, you know, share all, share all that content or, or consider it if you're not already on the patch platform and, you know, not, not to worry about not having the, the page views yourself because you're going to get your reports. I feel like it's essentially your page views. They're your stories, right? And it's, it's just a great way to uh, not just expose your content, right? But more than anything, we're all in the business of just informing our communities. And that's, this is another great, great way to, uh, to do that, plus you'll get, you know, get a little more revenue. Marsha and Colin, I think you'll probably want to weigh in with this too, but um, Marsha, I think it'd be interesting to hear from you on this. Um, Danny Stusser from thejoltnews.com, um, he says, you know, as a publisher of a hyper-local news site covering a small city that is not yet served by Patch, this feels like making a deal with the devil. Somehow I feel that the more successful our partnership with Patch would become, the more likely Patch would set up a site here. The, that would, I think, cannibalize our fledgling organization. But he's sincerely interested, says he's sincerely interested in finding out if he's being naive. So, you know, I think hearing from Marsha or Nancy in particular, um, your perspective on this, and then Colin, anything you want to add as well would be really helpful. 
Sure, I, I could jump in first, and uh, Nancy, I think it'll you know be really good to hear from you too. Um, you know, I mean, I, I mean, as a statewide news organization, I don't, I don't have that worry, right? As a local news, you know, uh, INN member or a, any of us, for profit or nonprofit, right? I, I, I can see that that would be a concern. I mean, I guess that's, I guess that's just, you know, that's a conversation with. Um, you know, it's an internal conversation and even a conversation potentially with Patch. I guess, you know, for me, though, I still think that if your content is wherever our content is consumed, where it's, whether it's on, you know, Yahoo News or wherever, um, it matters that we're reaching people and that you can include that in your overall distribution um, success story, right, to your communities. I think it's okay if content because news content is consumed on in so many places i just i wouldn't wouldn't worry about that so much although you know i i know that it's obviously it's central to a uh, new or a young news organization to build your uh reach on your on your own site great yeah Nancy? i can i weigh in a little bit please um Hi. You know, uh, I really like what you said, Marsha, about just getting the word out to the public. I know in New Hampshire, and I try to wrap my head around this in a, a different way. I was in the competitive um, let's scoop them world for many years of news, which I still think is, you know, competition is a wonderful thing. But I try to look at the community good. We're in a situation in New Hampshire where so many of the legacy newspapers are shrinking so much, not only in revenue, but also in readership, that Patch has been a, a, a wonderful um, lift for a lot of people who weren't getting any news. And also we have a situation where there's a lot of the few remaining legacy newspapers have paywalls and people aren't going there. We at indepthnh.org, we don't have a paywall. We never have a paywall and Patch doesn't have a paywall. So I feel like it's a real community benefit to um, get the word out there. I, and, you know, people always see our um, bylines, a little bit about who indepthnh.org is. And, you know, I think at this stage of the game, with so many news deserts out there that it's just important from my from my perspective even though we're small to get the word out there and it's never done anything but benefit us there's the local patch organizations they're probably more of a competition in my opinion to some of the legacy news outlets that have paywalls that aren't doing the kind of um, rigorous journalism now that Patch is doing. Uh, we provide the kind of content, the kind of stories we do, we try to make sure they're, um, maybe they're a little wonky from some perspectives, but they're wonky in a readable way and um, it, it's working. And, you know, I guess that's always a worry, but, uh, Trying to just keep people to my website, I, I we wouldn't be reaching many people, and we wouldn't be doing the public service journalism that that we want to do. And uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I guess I'm, I'm, I, I would lean towards, you know, more is merrier. Let's just get the word out there. Yeah, I mean, just to build on on, on what. Marsha and Nancy uh, said, and much more eloquently than I will, you know, Danny, I, I, if I can call you Danny, I, 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 I have to admit, I don't know Jolt News, but our goal at Patch is to um, really help promote other people. And when it comes to expansion, while we obviously, you know, will continue to expand, um, we're not looking to uh, build an audience on someone's back and take over that audience. That's the last thing we want to do. Um, if we were to do that, it would defeat the purpose of the partnership program, which is really about helping other people. We want our partners um, to receive more exposure, to receive more money, um, to be happy. It, it doesn't do any good 
uh, for us to have a program uh, that takes advantage of the people we're trying to help. Um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's just, it would be counterproductive for us. And, um, it's the last thing I would want to do, you know, like Nancy, uh, said of herself, you know, I, I spent many years in the ultra competitive world of, uh, trying to scoop other people. You know, I worked at the New York post, you know, about 25 years ago when we were in a, uh, a, a competition to the death with the daily news and it was all about the scoop and now i've really evolved into someone who's it's about it's about the news it's all about the news it's about helping people it's about the readers and making sure they have the they the information that they need to survive and we're not going to do anything to take away from an organization that is providing that service to people we want to help you we don't want to hurt you Marsha, it looks like you wanted to add one more thought to that. If yeah, you one more quick thought. Hey, hey, Colin, I think we might have to ask these questions too. Is, you know, I've been thinking a lot about what we can do, and th this maybe also goes to your point, Danny. Um, what we can do to take advantage of the fact our stories are on another platform, right? And where can we, on those story pages, can we begin to recruit people to subscribe? That doesn't mean they have to leave patch, right? Subscribe and come to join um, our sites to uh, participate, to, you know, donate and support um, and uh, invite them to, you know, become members of the of that larger uh, community. Again, it doesn't mean that they have to leave Patch to do that. It just means they could be part, uh, a bigger part of the community. And then um, Colin, I also think uh, Danny had a really good question just here in chat about, yes. you know, how does it help the sponsors and advertisers of the local, uh, you know, state, regional, or topical uh, news organization that is providing content to you as a publisher? Um, you know, and maybe there's something that we can do with that to promote our, our, our sponsors on the patch platform, just, you know, on our pages or something like that. I mean, there might be some other way that we could, um, take advantage of that and uh you know i think you know i don't know i mean i just i thought that was a really good question and i hadn't really um hadn't thought about that yet well what a couple of things that we have in mind that we're going to be doing more of is um every week we're going to be doing a roundup of partner stories that will appear on patches uh national pages to give people an opportunity to see what's happening um and do, you know, cause it's really, again, it, it's about trying to promote the partners. And as for, um, and I think Danny had mentioned, you know, cannibalizing um, other sites, you know, I, I think, and I'm pretty sure it was Nancy who was telling me the, uh, the other day that as a result of exposure on patch, they've received more subscriptions. Uh, though I may be wrong in attributing that to Nancy, but I feel like, um, I, you know, it's something that we've heard from other people is that by making people aware of the work others are doing, those others are getting more subscriptions and more funding as a result. Mm -hmm. that, that, that was yeah, a, can I uh, jump in? Oh. Please do, Nancy. Yeah, um, I wanted to just jump in because, uh, and I forgot what I was going to say. Give me one second. It's... Yeah. Oh, I did want to mention that um, we don't have subscriptions, but we do get a lot, a lot more readers. And I did, I do think this is a good area to explore. And one thing that I noticed um, Patch in New Hampshire did voluntarily without my requesting is they did promote our fundraisers, different fundraisers that we have. We had a New Hampshire Gives fundraiser that is specific to nonprofits here in New Hampshire. And I was really happy that patch.com and promoted this. And I think this was, um, and put a nice link to our site, New Hampshire, there were nonprofits from all over the state. They talked about some of those, but it was um, in-depthnh.org that they promoted greatly. So I do think, I agree with Marsha that there is, and Colin, that's a good area to explore, um, to see how we can benefit 
the people who do sponsor us and do help us out and do underwrite us. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, Danny, I, I see that, you, and again, if you don't like being called Danny, I apologize. No disrespect is mentioned, but um, you're absolutely, listen, it's a really, really tough business and there's a lot of um, insecurity and, you know, it, it's not just, you know, you're not um, crazy for asking these questions and you're perfectly warranted in asking these questions. Um, you know, I, I can't promise you what the future holds. All I can tell you is what our philosophy is. And, you know, we started this program, yes, obviously to give more content for our readers, but really to help promote the work of others. Um, we do it with colleges and universities as well to, you know, promote student uh, journalism. We have, you know, partnerships with people like Stanford and Temple and um, Boston College and the University of Michigan. Um, and, you know, for us, it really is about promoting other people. If other people go away, um, then we haven't done our job. You know, every time I see that a news organization is fo has folded, I feel like there was more that we could have done. Um, you know, keep asking the questions. You're absolutely right to do that. All I can do is tell you that, um, you know, our intention is to help, not hurt. Colin, I, I think you have a slide here later on, but I wondered if you might talk a little bit just about the demographics of the audience that people get on Patch, because that's another thing that um, I think some publishers consider when deciding whether to work with an aggregator is whether in aggregate they're getting a different audience than they may be getting on their own in their site. So I, I can move through these yeah. slides a, a couple and find the slide, but maybe you can speak. Yeah, that would, yeah, that would be great. I mean, when it comes to that, and I'm going to confess, it's something that Patch has um, um, fallen. In one way, we've been very successful in building an audience of people who really want local news. As you can see from the slide, most of our readers are uh, women, they're homeowners. We have a good percentage that are parents, an unusually large percentage that are pet owners. And that's for some reason very important to people. And as a dog owner, I, can, I guess I understand that. But, um, and, and, they're very, and they're fairly, I mean, I don't wanna say, you know, we have household incomes of 100,000, which is not well off anymore, but is certainly better off than some, not as well off, off as others. And, you know, the area where we have fallen short is that we do have an overwhelmingly white readership. And it's something that we are working very hard to correct because, well, not correct, but change to make it more diverse because um, there are a lot of communities out there that don't get the coverage they deserve. And there are a lot of very small news organizations that cover specific area uh, communities of color and other communities and we're working to work with them um i see someone has danny's asked about the age demo and it's um i'm gonna I, I totally blanked on what the actual age demo is but i can tell you over the past uh year it's uh been going down as more people we've been making a very big pit push on mobile and I think that's worked in uh, lowering our age demo. Great. Um, Duke Lou asks, how do we sign up? Is there a contract? Um, what, what are next steps? And you know, we've got about, I'd say about 10 minutes left. So maybe kind of talking about what the process looks like um, would be good at this point. The process is, is, is very simple. There is a contract uh, when it comes to revenue sharing. Um, and it is a, uh, uh, I, I wish it was a simpler contract, but it was written by lawyers, which automatically means it will never be as simple as it should be. But the uh, gist of it is you reach out to me, uh, as the slide shows, I'm at Colin Miner at patch.com, C-O-L-I-N dot M-I-N-E-R at patch.com. Um, and really people can call me at 503-407 three six five zero um and uh, the worst case scenario is it goes to voicemail and i will call you back um uh there's a contract it's a simple contract it basically says 
that uh, we're not going to change your content when it appears on our site. We may change a headline to make it fit. We will uh, change things for style, like uh, our headlines are all initial caps. Uh, so we'll make sure it fits in with that. We use postal abbreviations for states as opposed to the AP, which is the three letter abbreviations. Um, but we don't change people's content and the contract uh, makes that clear. Does that uh, deal with the- Yeah, uh, I think, uh, uh, I guess I, I might add that, um, you know, INN worked with Patch on that contract to kind of make it, uh, put it in a place where we would feel comfortable recommending it as something for you to consider. So we, you can, you know, you should review it closely, follow your internal legal procedure, procedures, but you should know that INN and Patch did work together to um, put a contract in front of you that we felt was something you could sign if it was a good fit for your organization. Um, we have another question from Matt. Uh, Colin, are there any CTAs for publishers to acquire the readers, e.g. email signups or subscribe? And I think that gets a little bit to what Marsha was saying a, a couple minutes ago. Yeah, I, I think that's something that we're working on. We need, um, we are working to do more to promote our local partners. Um, you know, we've been very good about running people's content, making it clear that where the content comes from by creating user profiles, which gives uh, dedicated bylines and we include links back. Uh, but we need to do more to promote and include subscription uh, signups to help, uh, to help drive people more to your sites. And we are gonna continue doing that as I've, uh, as I've said hopefully a couple of times, uh, it's a learning process. And as we learn more about things that we can do to help promote people, we will continue to do that. Um, the other thing we do do, as Marsha alluded to, is every time we have a partner, we create a, an analytics dashboard so you can look in real time and see how your stories perform on patch, how long people are there, where the stories are being read, and, um, and you can get a, a sense of what kind of check you'll be getting at the end of the month. Um, and you mentioned sort of checks coming at the end of the month. I know we were on that slide briefly, but you know, you just say, are there any restrictions on how long you have to wait in terms of revenue to getting a, a check or, or how does the payment process work? Uh, you will get paid by within 30 days of the close of the previous month. And we're looking at speeding up that process. Um, part of the problem is we've been a little bit of a victim of our own success. Um, and uh, we're expanding our capability at dealing with that. Uh, but you're guaranteed a check or direct deposit. We also now do direct deposit, which is a absolute response to uh, one, the pandemic, but two, also uh, partners asking, um, you know, if we could just put the money in their bank as opposed to mailing out a check. Uh, and uh, so we, we've uh, started adapting that. Um, another question, can you limit the number of stories that Patch picks up? Yes, uh, very much so. If, there, if you have a story um, that you don't want us to run because it's either an exclusive to you, you want to make sure only, you know, uh, only your readers can see it, uh, we, have a, uh, we have a new partner where they have a paywall for some stories and we're not going to print those stories. So they let us, you know, and the same with photos. If you have a story that you don't want us to use, if you have a photo that you don't want us to use, we're not gonna use it. This is, again, about promoting you, promoting the work you want promoted. We're not gonna get in the way of that. We're not gonna interfere with anybody's agreements. We're very, very mindful of only using uh, artwork and photos that we have the ability to use. We. Uh, don't want to get anyone in trouble. We don't want to get sued. We do, certainly don't want to get ourselves in trouble. That's great. Um, I think that looks like just about all the questions we have. So Colin, I don't know if you want to make any closing thoughts um, or you know, invite your panelists to or anything like that. But I, I think it's probably a good time to kind of wrap, wrap up. Um, I, I think that, you know, Patch, is not perfect. No news organization is perfect. All I can tell you is every day we go out there 
trying to find ways to help communities. And my job is to really do everything I can to make sure that we can help local publishers. We want to promote your work. We want to share your work. And wherever possible, we want to be able to give you a little bit of revenue. Uh, no one's going to get rich off of a patch partnership, but no one in this business ever gets into this business thinking they're going to get rich doing anything. So, um, you know, we, we're we growing, we're learning, um, and we're here for you. And if Marsha and Nancy want to add anything, I'd you know, they're much more eloquent than I am. You know, um, it's Nancy speaking, and I did want to just add, and I'm glad you mentioned it, Colin, from an ethical point of view, you know, the stories are not um, changed. The headlines, if, if they're changed at all, it's to fit. It's not to try to slant a story or um, do anything with a story. So from an ethical point of view, it, it's been a wonderful partnership. And beyond the contract, and I spent a great deal of time going through the contract, after that signed, there's no paperwork. I really, in a small operation, we don't have time for a lot of additional bookkeeping, um, a lot of different you know, forms to fill out. I'm kind of form challenged anyway. So that's been wonderful. Um, and there is a platform, that, uh, there is a, 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 an analytic that I can go to every month and sort of get a feel for how the stories are doing, how much I can expect to receive in a, a check. So it's been a, um, a, a very good partnership. Thanks. Yeah, I would say, I just wanted to finalize that uh, too, add to Nancy's uh, comment that getting the analytics is really helpful. So um, I get mine daily, so you can get them daily, monthly, however often you want them. And you know, it's a great way to track really quickly, is this serving me, you know, and my news organization? Um, and, you know, you can see by community, um, you know, at that level, you can see the overall data. We have it built right into our data studio, so it's really easy to get to, and, you know, it just comes as a report attached every single day, and I look at it every morning. So, you know, I think that will be very useful to our, uh, to all of you. <laughs>